Algebra 2 CRAM, New York State Algebra 2 Regents, Common Core, Complex Number Basics. Number one, simplify a complex number. Inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to order your complete CRAM packet. Introduction to complex numbers. One, use the imaginary number i to rewrite this expression. Simplify all radicals. Radical negative four. All right, so the first thing that you need to understand is that i squared satisfies um, negative one or i squared is equivalent to negative one. For any positive real number, let's give it the variable c, the principal square root of uh, the negative version of c is going to be i radical c or the square root of negative c is equivalent to i radical c, okay? And um, this is basically the definition of the principal square root of a negative number. The principal square root, in case you forgot or you didn't know to begin with, is the unique non-negative square root of a non-negative real number. But the concept of the principal square root can't be um, traditionally extended to real negative numbers since uh, the two square roots of a negative number can't be distinguished until one of them is identified as the imaginary unit i, at which point we can then distinguish as the principal square root. And in case you're just confused about that theoretical statement I just made, Basically, what I'm trying to say is that i is equivalent to the square root of negative 1, and if you square i, you're going to get this, negative 1, okay? So basically, all you're doing is factoring out i whenever you see a negative square root, and then you're left with your real portion, at which point you can go on to identify a principal square root. Now let's just get back to our original problem. We have radical negative 4 is equivalent to i radical 4, again, because we extracted the negative portion as imaginary, so we factored out a radical negative 1. And the next thing that we can go ahead and do is factor out a perfect square um, so that we can simplify, because we should know by now that the invisible index never written for a plain radical is two. So if we factor out a perfect square, we'd be eliminating the radical sign and the square exponent to reveal the leftover radicand, okay? So this is equivalent to i radical two squared. And at this point, again, we can simplify to two i because um, when you take the square root of a square, you're left over with the base of the exponential expression or the um, numeral of the radicand, okay? All right, so yeah, this is our final answer.